What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I want to have a discussion about the question which lock type is the best for a folding knife. I'm sure you guys have heard that question asked before. You've probably asked it yourselves. Uh, you know you've heard it asked before and then inevitably heard somebody stand up or say in the comment section the cold steel triad lock is the best locking system. I want to explore that a little bit. I want to find out what people actually mean when they're asking that. What they, what they think they mean and what the implications of it are and how it actually pertains to each individual uh, individual person and what we're actually using our folding knives for and what really is the best use of our money when we're talking about um, the locking system. Before I get started here, uh, those of you who have been watching and, and enjoying my content, um, I appreciate that so much. Uh, again, if you'd like to support me, you can do so by following the link in the description to my Patreon and you can support me in any way you see fit. Even if you don't want to, to give anything, that's totally fine. I do invite you to at least go check it out. That would mean the world to me. Um, anyways, I have a whole bunch of different locking systems here. Some, some variants of of other locking systems, and we're going to talk about each one. Um, before we do that, I think uh, I think it's important to first think, you know, uh, think about this question: What do I want from my folding knife? What am I going to ask of my folding knife? It's the most important question when you're trying to pick out the appropriate knife. I mean, not just in lock type, but for a lot of different stuff, you know. If you want, I mean, truthfully, here, I can save you guys a whole bunch of time. Truthfully, you want to know, let's say you equate the entire cost, the entire value of a folding knife to its lock strength. You are only concerned with the durability of the knife as a whole and of the lock strength. The first thing I'd say to you is, what are you going to be doing with it? Are you sure you don't need a fixed blade? And they're like, no, 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 I want the strongest locking you know, system on the planet. I, I exist on the margins of society. My life is dedicated to you know, rescuing people, extreme survival. Um, I'm going to be using my knife for things that nobody should ever use a knife for. I'm going to be putting a lot of torque on the pivot area, a lot of downward pressure, a lot of upward pressure. I'd go, you know, my answer to that would be, boy, again, sounds like you should probably be using a fixed blade and there's a lot of other elements to consider like the steel and things like that. But if, I mean, I suppose if you want to reduce it to the lock type, then yeah, the cold steel triad lock. By the way, I love this knife. I love the triad lock. You know, before I, I get all, you know, get, get all the cold steel fan, flans uh, flamed up, flans, all the cold steel fans flamed up and, and agitated with me. I do love the tough light. I do love... Um, the code for the American lawman, and I do love the triad lock, but um, you know, that would be my answer. Honestly, that would be my answer. You know, if you're going to reduce the total value of the knife to just that and isolated and not consider anything else, and you definitely don't need a fixed blade for whatever reason, <laughs> then yeah, the cold steel triad lock is for you. Um, but that's rarely the case. In fact, I, I sat down and thought about this, and guys, I, I didn't pull this data from anywhere. This is a shot in the dark. This is a guess. Just based on my experience on the forums, chatting with you guys, watching YouTube videos, and just, you know, like living in Kansas and, and uh, you know, here where we can carry anything and everything, and, uh, you know, talking with people who work on farms, who work on construction sites, and people like me who work in an office, um, this is my guess on the percentages of people that, you know, who have pocket knives and what they use it for. I think 80% of people who are, whether you're an enthusiast or you're a knife collector, knife user, whatever, 80% of us, and maybe my viewing audience is different, you know, but you guys watching this video do not represent the entirety of the world. You, you represent probably more of the enthusiast class, so my, my comment section might disagree with me, but... 80% of us are general EDC users. We're probably office setting guys. We use our knives around the house and, you know, maybe for food here and there, but that's probably about it, you know? And then, you know, of course, there are, you know, random scenarios. Maybe we go camping every now and then, you know, but it's, it's pretty limited to that stuff. I think that's 80% of us. I think 19 to 20% of us um, have also some general EDC scenarios in our everyday life. Um, but I also think, you know, there, there are pe definitely people who are using their knives in more hard use scenarios, outdoor use, construction, demolition, um, basically hard work environments. But still, they're using their knives in a way that would be considered reasonable for a folding knife. They're still using the knives for cutting. 
uh, and, and, you know, maybe heavy pressure cuts, more heavy pressure cuts on harder materials and maybe with, with more torque uh, than in general EDC scenarios, office settings, things like that, but still what you would reasonably ask of a folding knife. I'm gonna move some of these out of the way here so we can get them all open. Now, truthfully, I think less than 1% of people, and I could be wrong, but even if I am wrong, I think one thing we can all agree on is that um, the, uh, the, the minority of us, you know, I mean, the vast majority of us are using knives for knife things, right? And we have regular lives. We're not jumping out of helicopters and surviving in the wilderness for decades. You know, we're not, we're not doing stuff like that. You know, I'm so, and, and again, I'm not trying to insult anybody because I know there are people on the planet who might ask more of their folding knife than your regular Joe. But honestly, I think it's like, like 1%, you know? And what I'm talking about are, you know, I would say like probably military. I'm not military, but I would assume, you know, military, first responders, you know, people. And, and amongst those people, people who are, who carry pocket knives and actually use them for extreme, you know, things, for extreme tasks. There's, there's plenty of, of people in this, in this category, you know, people who are, are, you know, trying actually out in the wilderness, trying to survive for long periods of time. So like actual, um, you know, uh, emergency service uh, or first responder people and, and soldiers who might carry knives, but not actually use them for crazy scenarios. I'm, t I'm talking about those people who would have a reason for that, who actually use it for that. It's probably less than 1%. So when I talk about asking, you know, asking yourself, like, what, what am I asking of my folding knife? You know, ask yourself, like, where, where do I fall here? And like I said, um, some of these, uh, those percentages could sway a little bit one way or the other, but I, I would venture to guess I'm pretty close. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down and talk about these common, more common lock types. Uh, and I'm going to talk about, you know, which of these scenarios they would be good for. Whether or not they would function correctly in, in these uh, carry scenarios or use scenarios. Um, so that, you know, I, I kind of, I just want to add a little bit more information. Because there's, there's such simple responses when people ask, like, or people argue about the strength of lock types. And, it doesn't really, what I'm getting at is I'm not so sure that it matters so much, which is the strongest. It matters what e each individual person wants from their pocket knife. So here I've got a, uh, an Italian, um, an Italian uh, automatic knife, and this is a Leveretto. Um, you could also put, you know, the typical, I've got some push button uh, automatics that function with the swivel guard or your swing guards, basically your dressy automatics. These are not notoriously strong locking systems. This is a, uh, it is a pocket tool. It's something that deploys conveniently. It's something that's got a sharpened blade on it. And it's something that does lock into place and is, you know, it's not going to go anywhere unless you disengage it, right? What do I think this lock is good for? Um, I think this, this lock is plenty fine for eight, for, um, 80 percent of us who are just using our knives for general EDC tasks. Uh, you're opening letters, you're cutting open cardboard boxes. You're basically using the knife as a knife. Do I think that it would function well in an outdoor hard use scenario? Construction or demolition, uh, any type of outdoor home project? No, I don't think so. I think, uh, I think you're better off, you know, leaving that stuff for a harder or, or a, a more durable locking system if you have to depend on a folding knife. And I know, I know there's just as many fixed blade guys out there going, why are we even having this conversation? Just use a fixed blade for everything. We have to have this discussion because it, it is so, it's so talked about so constantly, you know, and I just, I want to simplify it. I, not necessarily create more argument, but try and simplify it a little bit. Uh, what we've got next up is the plunge lock or the button lock. Not, not like your typical button lock, but this one has a spring associated with it. Um, essentially, uh, there's a cutout on the um, tang of the blade to accommodate for this cylinder which is um, right now locking the blade in the closed position and a spring with tension on it is ready to push the blade open as soon as you push that button down and the cylinder moves out of the way. It's a decently strong locking system. You know, um, Protec uses it on a lot of their knives and their knives are, you know, created for uh, emergency response people, you know, uh, uh, military, things like that. So general EDC, absolutely, 100%. It's totally fine. It's going to function just fine. Outdoor hard use, yes, absolutely. It's going to function for that. Do I think it's going to function in extreme scenarios? 
If you're going to stab that blade into something and you're going to start prying and rely solely on that button lock, no, I don't think so. But why would you ask that of your folding knife, you know? Use a pry bar or a fixed blade. So no, I don't think for the 1% who are going to do that kind of stuff with their knife that that's going to, that's going to work for them. Back lock. Now this is an example of a knife that's pretty lightweight, so it's reinforced with some plastic, um, but the back lock itself is a fairly strong locking system. In fact, I would venture to say that it's one of the stronging, stronger locking systems when it's coupled with some uh, extra outside reinforcement, you know. Uh, so EDC tasks, yeah. Outdoor hard use tasks, yeah, absolutely. Extreme use tasks, again, um, why are you, you know, I mean, so you're going to be prying and you're going to, I probably not. I mean, at that point, you know, if you really, if you're going to be pushing down super duper hard and putting all the pressure into the cut, I would imagine this back, you know, this area where it locks out here. Yeah. It's probably going to take an inhuman amount of force to get the knife to disengage or break that way. You're going to push, be pushing down on it this way. I think same thing, same with the locking system. You're going to be applying like force like this. No. And why? So no, it's, it's not going to, um, but if you fall in the, the other 99%, you're going to be just fine with that locking system. Traditional liner lock. Let's move some of these down here because these are, these are going to be applicable here in a sec. Traditional liner lock. We've got the Ontario Rat 1 here. Um, this is one of my favorite uh, outdoor use knives. Um, it gets used, it gets resharpened. Um, if you can... I don't know if we can see here. We've de we've got some some permanent scratches and marks and staining on here that just aren't going to go away. And my poor sharpening job that I did. Um, it doesn't look too bad, but it's more chewed up than it's appearing. I use this knife all the time outside. Um, so again, you know, EDC stuff. Yeah, outdoor hard use. Yeah, in my experience, it's just fine. Extreme scenarios. Well, again, if all of your all of the force of the cut is going to be put on the blade, yeah, it's going to take probably again an inhuman amount of force to get anything to disengage or break put it on the spine well you're you know it's it's left up to the integrity of the liner lock and it's pretty thin so i would imagine you know you might be able to create enough force this way to disengage it why would you be doing that i don't know that's not a regular knife task left and right again you want to put all that force on the pivot God knows why, but if you were going to do that, no, I honestly don't think so. So extreme use scenarios for the one percent, nope. I don't think it's gonna. I don't think it's gonna um, do that. But um, and I know some of you are like, I can't agree with you on the one percent. It might be more like five percent or even as much as ten percent. That's totally fine. You know, I don't want people to get hung up on what percentage of people I assume. What I'm, what I mean is, what I'm trying to get at again is that the vast majority of us are not in that one to 10% of people who are doing, and again, I don't think it's 10%. I would say at most it's 5% of the knife community. Um, but the vast majority of us simply don't do these types of things with our folding knives um, to, to where we, we would need that type of locking system. Moving on to the traditional um, frame lock with no bracing lugs. Frame lock Really, in my opinion, is not all, I mean, you know, the, the, the integrity of the frame lock is dependent on, you know, its weakest point is going to determine how strong it is. And that's going to be the relief cut, which oftentimes is about as thick as your traditional liner lock. So, you know, it's, uh, you know, not, not, sometimes it can be more beneficial and sometimes not. I, I honestly think most frame locks are probably about as, if not maybe slightly more durable than a liner lock. So same thing. Pressure on the blade, you're fine. Pressure on the spine, I don't know why you're doing that, but it, it, there's a chance it'll disengage. So it'll do general EDC tasks, 19 to 20% of us doing the outdoor hard use stuff, probably. I would be more concerned with what's in the pivot. Uh, is it phosphor bronze or is it uh, bearings? You want phosphor bronze for that. Um, for, the, uh, for, the, um, you know, for the minority of us uh, trying to survive in the jungle and hammering our blades into trees and then using them as a diving board and jumping off into ponds and rivers and stuff. No, it's probably not a good knife for that. Um, you, you're not going to, you're not going to want to use that, a traditional frame lock for that. Uh, the axis locker in this case, we're, we're, we have to call it the able lock cause this is a Hogue knife. Uh, again, yeah, general EDC, just fine. 19 to 20% of us using it for outdoor hard use. Uh, yeah, you're fine. You know, actually I think you're in a better situation on the spine and on the blade here. Um, I think it would take an insane amount of force to get it to disengage on the spine or blade. And I think some people have proven that. But, 
you're going to be doing left and right and crazy, you know, chopping and stuff. I don't know. I mean, it's not, it's not something that I would trust 100%, especially with those Omega Springs. I, I would think it would disengage. But for everything else, yeah, you're probably going to be just fine. How about the compression lock? That's a great locking system. Um, kind of the, I mean, it's the same idea as the liner lock, except it's, it's, it's in the back. So as far to, as far as like stabilization on the blade up and down, like pressure on the blade or pressure on the spine, your compression lock is probably more reliable than the liner lock. It's honestly probably more reliable and more stable than a frame lock. Um, I mean, it's, it's great. Left and right force though, again, you're, you're fully dependent on the pivot. It's not really about the locking system there. So general EDC, yes. Outdoor hard use, yes, you're totally fine. Consider what's in the pivot. This is uh, Phosphor Bronze, making it an excellent knife for the 95 to 90, 99% of us using our knives for knife tasks and actually using you know knives for hard use situations um, outside of unreasonable. Um, yeah, you're gonna be just fine. Uh, the unreasonable, you know, or the unreasonable or extreme use, you know, maybe by soldiers. Not to say that things that soldiers use their knives for are unreasonable, because at that point it's like, who are we to question? They're soldiers or first responders. Use your knives and in whatever way you need to. The point is, there's not, there's, there's way more of us who are not in that scenario. So again, no, I don't think it would do great there. Socom Elite, kind of a frame. I mean, this is like a sub frame lock or a liner lock. It's the same exact thing as your liner locks and your frame locks. This one has the bracing lugs though, so you have a little bit more stability left and right. Do I think it would survive in all extreme circumstances? No, I think uh, there's definitely, I mean, there's definitely a point where it's just, it's just gonna be more reasonable to simply use a different tool. How about the, um, uh, the uh, ball bearing lock on the Manix 2? Um, honestly, I, th I think it's about exactly the same as the axis lock or the able lock from the Hogue knives. I, th I think you're good on the spine pressure. You're good on blade pressure. As soon as you start relying on the pivot when you're going left and right, I mean, at that point, you, you're also you also need to worry about on this knife. You know, um, I mean, is it gonna is it the pivot that's gonna fail first, or is it the tip of the blade? You know, there's other things you have to consider besides the lock. The lock might survive just fine, but your blade might go. You know. So another great example there. We've got uh, the 0393 here that is a frame lock, or you could call it a liner lock, you know, under overlays. Same thing. It's got the bracing lug, so a little bit more rigidity in terms of left and right play. So great for EDC, great for outdoor use that's reasonable, stuff that you would ask of a folding knife. Is it going to be good for extreme use? I, there's definitely a point where the lock might just fail you know the the geometry might fail because you're doing something with a knife that is not a reasonable knife task task and you should probably be using a fixed blade uh, moving on here to the hinder xm18 this is a triway so you could have phosphor bronze in here it's a nice thick beefy frame lock where even the relief cut is a little bit thicker than normal um You've got the uh, you've got the bracing lugs. I mean, a lot of people would consider this one of the most hard use folding knives out there, and a lot of people do use their knives. You don't believe me? Take a look at the users and collectors group. There are tons of people on that users uh, users and collectors group on Facebook that have videos and pictures of them legitimately beating the crap out of these knives. They're great. Again. For uh, general EDC, yeah, it's kind of a big knife for EDC, but I do it just because I like to. Yeah, it'll work. Outdoor hard use, yeah, definitely, absolutely. Especially you put the phosphor bronze in there, you're fine. It's not going to get gunked up. Simple construction, you're good. The extreme use, honestly, yeah, I mean, it's still going to have the same issue that every single, not just ZT knives. I know people want to point out ZTs and long face geometry issues. promise you that there's an amount of force that I can apply to the back of the spine to get it to disengage. What am I doing with my knife where that's what I'm asking of it? Why do I need it to hold up to that? You know, I mean, it's like a lot of people would say that's a $425 knife or in the case of metal complexes, it's a $625 knife because he's got the titanium scale on it. Why would you pay that much money if it's not, it's, you know, if, if there is something you could be doing with it that could cause it to fail? My immediate question back to you would be, why, why is it my responsibility to equate the entire cost of the folding knife to a, a, uh, you know, a hypothetical level of durability that only corresponds to like people using their knives in extreme scenarios? I don't have to do that. You know, I can, I can enjoy having um, the options you know, for bearings and phosphor bronze. 
Um, I can enjoy the blade steel, the blade shape. I can enjoy the titanium, how it's finished, how it's put together. I don't have to relate all of that cost to utility. That's up to every single individual person, you know? Some people buy, uh, you know, when, they, when they're buying a vehicle, um, some people buy a Toyota Prius that doesn't have any options. All they're concerned with is fuel economy. They are only concerned with the utility of that vehicle in terms of fuel economy. Some people buy a, um, a maxed out, like loaded uh, one ton dually diesel because they're gonna be pulling a lot, they're gonna be traveling a lot. Maybe they want some of those luxury features because it makes their you know, 30, 40,000 miles a year they're putting on the vehicle more comfortable, but they also have to pull a super heavy trailer loaded up with cattle or something. Okay, it, it's, you know, that makes sense. Maybe the next guy down the street, you know, he's, uh, he's done well for himself. He doesn't need a Corvette, but he wants a Corvette, you know? So it's his money. He's gonna spend it on what, what he expects from his vehicle and what makes him happy. It does not need to be about utility. And I, I know people are like, of course he gets up on the pedestal, he gets up on the soapbox when he's talking about hinder and knives. No, I don't think hinder and knives can even stand up to some of the most extreme circumstances you could put a knife through. You should be using a fixed blade at that point. But I do think hinder and knives are some of the most durable frame locks on the planet. Moving on here, of course, we've got the triad lock last. This is the only triad lock that I have kept because this is a very cost efficient knife. Um, you can see here, this has been my buddy in my backyard. The edge is chewed up. Um, it's been beat up. Those of you who follow me on Instagram know that we're putting together a swing set right now. Um, when we dug the post holes, uh, this thing tore open bags of quickcrete. It was thrown in the dirt. Um, it definitely is dirty and has not been cleaned out. You can see dirt's getting caked up in there. It's probably some caking and crap lodged there behind the triad lock, but it still functions. It's fine. The triad lock is great. It does a good job of functioning, whether it's dirtied up or whatever. This is a $25 knife, roughly, and that locking system is super strong. Do I think uh, the cold steel triad lock is good for EDC stuff? Absolutely. Do I think it's good for outdoor use, you know, uh, construction, demolition, things like that, home projects? Yeah, definitely. I've got experience with it. Do I think that some of the most durable, maybe not necessarily this knife, because again, we're dependent on the durability of the scales, maybe the blade, thickness of the blade, thickness of the tip. Do I think these, some of the most durable triad lock knives in the world could stand up to the most extreme use that you could ask of a knife? Maybe a soldier, first responder, or extreme survivalist would ask for a folding knife. If any folding knife lock has a chance of doing it, it's probably the triad lock. But uh, again, you know, I think the triad lock will probably survive where your blade will fail or your scales will fail or something else will shear out. The triad lock itself will probably be okay if you're doing crazy prying or batoning or whatever. But at some point, something else, something has got to give. You know, we've all heard that. I mean, there's such a small margin where it makes sense to use a folding knife that is equipped with the triad lock instead of a fixed blade. I mean, you really have to be weighing out like what scenarios require the folding convenience of a knife and also the extreme durability of it and what profession or what lifestyle would I have to have for that to make sense. So yeah, Cold Steel fans, I think you can still stand up and claim, you know, the triad lock is the strongest, you know, mechanism. And if you're only equating the value of your knife to the strength and durability of the locking system, you know, then, then yeah, at that point, then it claims that title. It does. And believe me, I love it. I love the tri lock. I think it's super cool. And this is one of my favorite knives ever. Um, but I think the justifications for it circumstantially are super, it's the margins are like this, you know? It's just not, I mean, there's no reason for a regular person or the 19, 20% of us who are using the outdoor stuff. You guys don't need the triad lock. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, it's dependable, but you don't need it. If Cold Steel makes a whole bunch of knives, you know, that you're like, I don't really like how they look, or I don't really, I'm not getting the steel I want or the look that I want, but gosh, it's got the triad locked. I mean, you know, I'm sure you feel some sort of obligation to buy that because you're using your knife outdoor, but do you have to? No. Any of the other locking systems that I showed here, you know, that I talked about other than this guy are going to be just fine for you. Consider what's in the pivot, really. 
Don't have, if you're going to be using your knife outside and getting it caked up and gunked up, don't don't use bearings. Get a get a folding knife that's got the lock type you want and it's got the ease of manipulation you want. Just make sure it's got phosphor bronze. Make sure the blade stock thickness and the tip thickness is is actually you know good enough to um to do what you what you want it to do. You know, the PM2 it's got the compression lock. That's a that's a great lock for like you know the stability of the lock uh, with pressure on the spine and on the blade. You know, possibly better than a frame lock. But you look at the PM2's, you know, tip thickness versus the XM18. Yeah, there's a huge different in, difference in the price there. Maybe, uh, maybe a better example would be this and the, the ZT. Uh, but consider that. There's a lot more to durability um, than just the lock strength. And I feel like it's inevitable that I have stirred up an argument and caused people to get upset. Um, but uh, sorry, you know, that's we're not always going to agree. But I, I just... I feel like not enough discussion has centered around, you know, it's always like, what is the strongest lock? And then that's it. And nobody feels the urge to ask any questions around that. The question should always be, what am I going to use my knife for? What do I actually need? What do I want? Am I concerned with aesthetics? Am I only concerned with utility? Um, you know, does this knife fit my hand properly? Does it deploy the way that I want to in a convenient way, in a safe way? Um, all of those questions have to be asked, not just, well, which, you know, it's like, it, it's, I, I can almost imagine in my head, you know, every time somebody asks this question, you know, the, the guy with the, the, the big guy with the spot, with the uh, short spiky hair and the flamed Oakleys and like the leather jacket, you know, busts out of his one ton pickup and he's got, he's got his cold steel trad lock at his side. <laughs> It's like, oh, great. You know, that's a that, uh, fantastic presentation. I'm not 100% sure that I really need that though, you know. But yeah, it is cool. And, and in the case of the Tough Light at least, and honestly the Code 4 and the American Lawman, those are great cost-efficient knives. Uh, they have convenient deployment uh, methods. They're made out of great materials. They're plenty durable. And as a bonus for what they cost, you get the triad lock on them. So if you're really, really concerned with having the strongest lock, but you're also concerned with making sure that your money is going to the right place and you're still getting a dependable utilitarian tool without having to pay too much money, yeah, those are great choices too. But if you don't like those, you're not making a bad choice going with the Spyderco Shaman or the ZT0393. You know, other than the bearing situation. Or the Rat 1 with the liner lock. This is a $40 knife that's got a much longer blade, flat ground. I mean, all of those things need to be taken into consideration. We are coming up on 30 minutes, guys. So I'm sorry this not this uh, video drug out so long. I just, I really wanted to talk about this a little bit. So just make sure, you know, ask yourself. Um, uh, you might, you know, not everybody needs a, a lifted uh, Jeep Wrangler to get, get to work and back every day. You know, you might be okay with just a Toyota Prius, but may, maybe you're the guy who just wants a little more because it makes you feel good. There's nothing wrong with that either. You know, if you want to drive a lifted Jeep to work every day and it makes you feel good, and you know that occasionally you're going to take it uh, into the mountains, you know, um, or you're, you know, you know may, maybe you're going to you know, take it off road a little bit here and there, then, you know, if the justification's there for you, then buy what makes you happy. You don't have to listen to me or anybody else. You should buy what makes you happy. I think I'm going to end the video there, guys. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check that stuff out. And if you enjoy all my content, then please subscribe to my channel because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.